Howdy crew, it is May 21st, uh, almost 9 p.m. here in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey putting together a brief update on the situation in Iceland for you. I'm currently in North Iceland in a hotel in Akureyri. Uh, I've spent today, boy I was all over the place today. I spent quite a bit of time out in North Iceland. I think I did maybe seven or so different videos, so look for those in the next few weeks or so. Just absolutely captivated by this landscape and this country and uh, the amazing geology that's out here. Um, quite a bit of snow up here still in the north, um, but the roads were still passable. But yeah, a lot more snow in the north than in the south right now. I think spring's just barely come around as of late so but we'll go ahead and get right to the update I'll share more about my adventures here with my students and on my own and such in coming weeks probably in a live stream once I get back to the states um, so currently we're not seeing any eruptive activity so very much the the wait and see game continues uh, looking here at the Sunnuks craters uh, that we had erupting over the past few months, but all is quiet there, at least at the surface. Um, there was a holiday weekend this past weekend, and so things were a little quiet on the news front and the Met Office, but today everyone's back to work, and so there is a new Met Office update to go through for today, the 21st. Uh, so let me run you through this update from the Met Office. I have some uh, data to look at and a few news items from Amanda Joe, and then also one from our good friend Gilfi at Just Icelandic. He sent me a news story I wanted to share as well. Uh, he and I are hopefully going to meet tomorrow. He's been on pins and needles about he was he was down on the Reykjanes, then he came back north home because he's spending too many days and nights there um, at some expense, and so he came back north. But he is he's ready to go at any indication or sign that something's going to happen. Unfortunately we're just in a position where no one can say for sure when any sort of magmatic activity is going to begin. Uh, we just don't know that it's going to be soon. We just don't know exactly when. So working our way through the Met Office update. So accumulation of magma continues. Uh, we were up, to, we're up to now about 17 million cubic meters of magma that have been added since the March 16th eruption. Increased probability of some sort of event, whether that's an intrusion or an eruption, within the next few days. Most likely area is still believed to be the Sunnuks crater area where we've seen most of the eruptions take place over the last few months. And the eruption warning time might be quite short given that we already have a conduit and a plumbing system established Therefore, we don't expect there to necessarily be significant seismic activity preceding that event. That magma can move through those systems a little bit more easily um, and erupt at the surface without generating a lot of earthquake noise. Um, continuing on, so there was about 200 earthquakes over the weekend. Uh, the holiday weekend here in Iceland, most of them were below one in magnitude. So again, very small. That's pretty much on par with what they've seen over the past few days, most of them in that area i'll show you here in a second between uh well the, the main eruptive area and then another uh sort of cluster or trend of earthquakes just to the northwest of town just south of uh, thorpia their hill that sits there so our graph here shows the magma accumulation that's been ongoing uh, over the past well several months now so we are this lonely little red line out here um, headed to who knows where in terms of how much magma will continue to accumulate before there is some sort of event, whether that's an intrusion or a eruption. Notice that we have gotten as high prior to the uh, December 18th eruption, which was the first in this series, we got as high as about 19 million cubic meters. So right now we're at about 17, um, well beyond the volumes that were needed for some of the prior eruptions, but still uh, on that upward trend there. So still the Sunuks crater area is the most likely to erupt. Um, they recognized that there was a lot of talk in, in the news about the earthquakes west of Grindavik um, and that possibly magma could erupt there, but they consider that to be a pretty e extremely unlikely scenario. Uh, I would agree with that, at least at this time, given the data we have. Um, there was, there's, you know, an 
existing graben and faults there. That's probably what those earthquakes are representing rather than magma accumulating and working its way upward in that region. Um, so th the possibility exists, but it's, it's very low probability. So, and uh, I agree with the Met Office on that. Um, and then most notably, this was probably the biggest thing that came out today was that there was uh, at the Svartsingi power plant, there was apparently, and I'll show you the news story for this as well, there was uh, pressure changes in some of their boreholes um, and a sudden change of pressure has been one of the warnings that magma is moving from Svartsingi to Sunuks. Uh, it's previously been stated that the signs of a new magma flow were local small earthquakes in and around the magma tunnel, acceleration and deformation together, ground deformation, so, you know, the, the GPS measurements we've been looking at, along with pressure changes in boreholes in that area. This morning, a minor pressure drop was measured in uh, the Orku's borehole. I don't know if they're referring to one specific borehole or if it was measured in more than one. No seismic activity or other change was measured. Therefore, the Met Office does not activate contingency plans. So what they're saying is, hey, there was a change in the pressure in one of the boreholes, um, but we saw no other data to indicate that magma was moving uh, either laterally or upwards. And so they're not taking that one small data point as a sign or indicator that anything more significant is going to happen. I dug around a little bit, but it would be interesting from my perspective to know where the borehole is, um, location, the depth of the borehole, the um, if there was just one borehole or several, and exactly how much of a pressure change there was. What was the background pressure reading, and then how much did that change this morning. Those are all things that I would really like to uh, see revealed, but I haven't heard, seen any details regarding that. So that is um, the Met Office update so far. They're still using the same risk assessment map. When we look at the earthquakes over the last 24 hours, we see a similar pattern to what we've seen in the past with um, this cluster here, uh, just due west of the power plant area. That's near the the spatter cone that was erupting most recently, and then this more broadly distributed uh, pattern of earthquakes north and west of Grindavik. And those are this is all the earthquakes over that 24-hour period. If we just take out uh, the ones above magnitude zero, there's your there's the readings. If we go magnitude one, looks like there's just seven or so in the last 24 hours, with the biggest one being this this 1.8. Um, the depths of these are still, um, you know, four to five to six kilometers. So they're occurring in that area, in that depth that we've seen most consistently. So we're not seeing a trend of earthquake shallowing at all. They seem to be uh, down there close to the magma storage zone. So there's no indication that magma is on its way upwards in any way, shape, or form. Same thing here when we look at the last week. Uh, I believe I went over this in the last update as well, but this is the last week's worth of earthquakes. Again, a little tighter cluster here around the eruptive vents, and then more of a broadly uh, distributed cluster of quakes in this region here. Interestingly, I mean, it, you could fit any trend you want to this, um, but broadly it's a, a northwest-southeast trend, but not at the same orientation as that primary dike and intrusion that formed on November 10th that was uh, more northerly that was going like this so uh, what this means don't we just have no idea right now very likely a lot of this is related to uh, faults in the area we know we have the the this western graben that comes through this area over here some of those lie along that um, could be just weak spots of the crust that are being reactivated by the pressure maybe the pressure is more significant on the south sides or southeast side of this broad storage area which we believe sits somewhere in here um, lots of interpretations we could throw out there right now but we we just don't know exactly but it's worth watching these earthquakes over the next couple of days it could accelerate quite quickly um, within a few hours or even minutes and so what we'd expect to see is uh, earthquakes coming at a higher frequency and possibly getting shallower. 
and maybe or maybe not with greater magnitudes depending on exactly where it is if it's going to come through this area here we don't expect there to be necessarily a lot of earthquakes or high magnitude earthquakes if it's going to erupt from any other location um, there's a possibility or the more likelihood that we're going to see larger quakes and higher frequency so there's our earthquake data the uh, gps data is going to look a lot like what we've seen in the past but we're still seeing that inflation so that positive ground deformation signal showing that the ground is still being uplifted presumably due to the accumulating magma in the subsurface so we've been watching this trend since beginning of april uh, so for a solid six weeks or so the this inflationary trend and rate of inflation has more or less stayed the same and consistent uh, and that's the true that's true at other stations as well when we look at other stations in the area we see the upward movement and the inflationary trend continuing along with other movements in the north south and east west directions which uh, we could look at as well but in general um, the stations uh, you know to the north and west of the magma body are moving to the north and west those to the south and the east are moving south and east so let's look at a few of the uh, news stories that came about um, this one talks about that pressure change in the borehole um, and they did it is worth mentioning let's see if it's here yeah they actually sent some of their staff home for as a precaution due to these changes um, they just weren't sure what was happening what those borehole pressure measurement um, what those actually meant so for the safety of their employees they sent folks at the power plant home at least this morning or at least for today uh, interestingly the blue lagoon stayed open there was no change in their operations for today as far as i've been told and know um, and they can still run the power plant remotely so there's they don't necessarily have to have people on site all the time they can continue to generate power and do do the work that they do that way so interesting story there i'll make sure i put these under the uh, video description as these links um professor holskutson who has been a strong proponent of the eruption eventually at some point going to elver the old crater series to the west um he in this article thinks that some of these earthquakes we're seeing just to the north and west of Grindavik might be a sign that that's happening uh, it's as, it's as if the magma is looking further west he says my opinion is that the next time an eruption will come um in an eruption let's see that doesn't make much sense adding that the inflow into the magma chamber under Svart Sengi is now slower compared to all the other eruptions um yeah, if, the earth, if it starts going out in Elvrup, there will be more earthquakes like yesterday. Then there was a storm out at Reiknista and a small storm in the south of Elvrup. Um, yeah, so some translation stuff here, but he's still um, very much uh, a proponent that at some point it's going to end up there. And it may. I just don't think we're seeing any evidence, you know, even with these earthquakes here. The Elvrup system is, is over in this region here, and we're just not seeing any trend in this, this, the earthquake data in that direction these these quakes here even as you look at them through time aren't moving in that direction um, the ones from a week ago are in blue the ones from today are in red and so you can see they're just kind of randomly distributed in this zone so uh, not sure i agree but that's his opinion um, in terms of where he thinks this is going to go uh, at some point uh, and obviously he says that that would be one of the most convenient options in terms of a location. I think we all agree with that, that if we had uh, eruptions out here, they would head towards the sea and not endanger the town. That would be optimal all the way around. And then the last article uh, that Gilfi sent me is about another professor, um, a geophysics professor, uh, Magnus Tumi Gudmundsen, so he talks about uh, the pressure changes in at the power plant and that that could be a sign that the earth that the earth's crust is under a lot of pressure it's very close to breaking is his quote right here um, but then he goes on to uh, be very careful in making statements and says although it's most likely there'll be a magna flow and eruption in the end it's not possible to say when it will happen so even though we might have crept a little bit more forward today 
with that pressure change, um, if that's real, if that, that data measurement was actually accurate, um, it's still impossible to say exactly when we're going to see uh, that eruption. And the news article goes on to say that Grindavik is not a place for parties or children. So basically, um, the story there is that it could all accelerate quite quickly. Um, it could be very close to the town. And so keeping people out of the town as much as possible would seem, at least in the near term, while we go through these next few days and weeks, would be a good idea. So that is my update for you so far. Um, I will put another one together as soon as I can. I think Gilfi and I are supposed to meet in the morning, so I'll do a little interview with him. We'll see what else comes of that. And then probably later tomorrow, uh, I'll be making my way back down south. And I'll have another day on, let's see, Thursday uh, to get a few things done. Maybe go back down by the Blue Lagoon, see what's going on down there. Uh, and then Friday is when uh, my next little field trip starts. I've got a group of YouTube viewers coming here and I'll spend a week with them uh, looking around different parts of Iceland and showing them the geology. So thanks again for joining me. Appreciate your support. Uh, it means a lot to me. Thanks for tuning into the Iceland update here and I will throw another one of these together as soon as I can and also depending on what goes on and what uh, data there is to discuss. So thanks so much. Take care and we'll see you next time.